Good afternoon and welcome to the first episode in this series where we're talking about crowdfunding for youth projects. Uh, my name is Sammy Morger. I'm broadcasting live today from Crowdfunder HQ in Cornwall. And we're also really lucky to be joined by our fund matchmaker, Arna, who hopefully you can see uh, down in the corner down there. She's going to talk to us a little bit later about some of the funding available on Crowdfunder. Um, so first of all, a little bit of an introduction. Um, so crowdfund.co.uk, we are the UK's largest rewards based platform. As I said, we're based down here in Cornwall and we see around about 150 to 200 new ideas coming onto the platform every day, which gives you a little bit of an idea of just how popular um, crowdfunding is becoming. Um, so I wanted to start with a bit of an introduction into how crowdfunding works, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so we're talking about rewards-based crowdfunding here. Um, we're not talking about equity or peer-to-peer -peer lending, and we're just talking about rewards. If you're interested in those other types of crowdfunding, uh, that we can certainly point you to other places where you can find out about those. So first step is to come onto the Crowdfunder website and set up your unique project page, which explains what your idea is, what you're trying to do. You then set a target and how long you need to reach it. Um, and that can be anywhere from two weeks up to eight weeks. So we're talking about a short, sharp fundraising campaign here. Now you set your project live and you start spreading the word to your friends, family, everyone that you know, basically telling them about what you're doing. And people who like what you're doing can either donate some money or they can pledge and receive a reward in return that they'll receive later once your project has been successful. And what we mean by a reward can really vary. So it can be anything from an invitation to an event, um, it can be um, an experience or actually a product itself or even just a thank you or some sort of sponsorship. Um, and we're going to come on in the next session to talk in a lot more detail about what kind of rewards work best and how to work out what the best rewards for your project are. Okay, so a little bit of an example just to check we're all on the same page. So here we've got Lynn and Rebecca who are from the Street Goat Project. They wanted to set up an urban goat farm in Bristol. As you can see, there's a little uh, goat in the back of their van there. Um, so they decided to crowdfund to get the project off the ground. Um, they were offering things in return, like um, an opportunity to come along to the farm. They even made, you can see their screen printing and um, some tote bags. And they were even offering things like um, goat's cheese that you could get um, once the, the farm was set up. And you can see here that they raised just over £9,000 in four weeks, and that was from 167 people in their community. And of course, crowdfunding isn't just about goats. There's a huge range of projects that come to Crowdfunder to get their ideas off the ground. So it could be a business, uh, you could be a school or university, you might be someone who's making a film, or even someone who's doing something for a charitable cause. We see all sorts of things on Crowdfunder, which is, is why um, it's such a great platform. Um, so, why do people crowdfund? And I think um, this is a really important question. And the obvious answer is for the money, because you get some funding. Uh, we know that, it's in the name. But actually, for a lot of projects, there's a little bit more to it than that. So if we think about Lynn and Rebecca with their Street Goat project, validation was really key for them. Um, basically figuring out if anyone else thinks this is a good idea or if it's just as we totally bonkers that we want to set up an urban goat farm. So by having 167 people who have put their money in and said, yes, I think this is cool, I want it to happen, that's really great in terms of validating that idea that shows them that other people want to get involved and, and think that this is, is, is great. Um, it's also great validation if you are looking um, to get some additional funding, um, perhaps through um, a grant funder or perhaps through um, something like a bank loan. If you can go into one of those meetings with that in your back pocket, a successful crowdfund, that's a really big tick in the box for, for those funders. Um, anyone who's already been through crowdfunding will tell you that the awareness around what you're doing massively increases after you've run a crowdfunding project and actually while you're doing it. And I think that's because it's something out of the ordinary. It's something outside of the day-to-day -day and it's very focused and it's, it runs with a, a short sort of intensive 
period of time, um, which really means that you um, are really enthused and, and sort of um, passionate about speaking about your idea, the loudest and proudest that you ever have done before whilst you're crowdfunding. It's very much a side effect, it's unavoidable. You can't crowdfund without telling everyone about what you're doing. Another thing that we find which is really key for crowdfunding projects is that supporters, those people who come in and pledge towards your project, they actually tend to become advocates. They tend to become um, people who support your project for the long haul. Um, it might be that then you'll see them at your next event. You might find that they become one of your uh, really loyal customers. Um, but they tend to be people that because they've invested in making your idea happen, um, often from those early stages, that they feel like they're very much part of the journey and that they're very much part of the team and they really want to see it continue to do well. And of course, that's really strong the longevity of what you're doing. And finally, um, something which is pretty unique to Crowdfunder is the extra funding that we have available from a huge range of partners that you can access just by running your project with us. And Anna's gonna tell us a little bit more about that, how you access it and some of the specific funds in just a few moments time. So at this point, people sometimes say, this sounds amazing, um, what's the catch? You know, what's, what's, the, what's the catch here? I'm kind of waiting to find out about it. Basically, there isn't one. It's free to set up a crowdfunding project. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no fee to pay up front. Um, there is a fee if you successfully raise the funds that you need. And that's 5% plus pay 18. That's for using the platform. Um, there's also some charges by our payment provider, um, which is Stripe, which um, you can use to collect payments through credit or debit cards. And you can actually find all the information about the fees and what it's going to cost you to crowdfund if you head to our website, scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see there's a link there um, at the bottom for fees. So I'm now going to hand over to Anna, who's, as I said, going to tell you a little bit more about the extra funds available on the platform. Thanks, Anna. Hello, thank you, Sammy. Um, so I'm going to be, first of all, turning the volume down to my end a little bit before I continue on. Um, and I'm going to be telling everyone about extra funding that we have a crowdfunder. So extra funding um, is basically thanks to our partners. Um, we've teamed up with some really amazing organisations and local authorities. And basically they have some money that they want to give away to some projects. Um, the ones I'm going to be talking about today with you guys is um, focusing on youth-centred projects. But we have a whole list of other ones, and if you want to have a look at them, you can just um, go to that link above and you can see them all. So the first um, extra funding option I'll be talking about is the Crowdfund Dorset Fund. And Dorset City, uh, Dorset County Council, I should say, um, have teamed up with us to offer up to £10,000 for youth projects in Dorset. So if you are um, a project on owner and are based in Dorset and give young people something to do or somewhere to go, then you should really take a look at this fund. It's quite broad. Um, so yeah, have a look and see if you think you're eligible. The second fund that we have today is called Brum Smiles, and this is thanks to Birmingham City Council. So they are offering any projects in the Birmingham area that um, help under 25s get healthy or improve their well-being um, up to £10,000 as well. So these funds can really help boost projects um, and help them reach the targets. They basically um, pledge and approve projects, just like any other backer would, and it helps contribute to the overall target. Um, and how you apply to these funds is quite easy. You, um, first of all, have to create a project from Crowdfunder. Once you start doing that, you'll see this notification pop up and a little button saying, tell me more. So once you click into that little button, you get taken to the application page. So this is the example of the Dorset County Council Fund. You can also read the criteria again. So it's obviously a really good idea to have a quick read of it all again and make sure you um, address those points that they want you to address. The application forms for all our funds are really easy. We try to keep it really simple and brief. So yeah, it's a great idea to have a look at them and um, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us because we're always happy to help um, anyone that is a little bit unsure or intimidated by these things. So thanks, I'll take it back to you guys now.
Thanks so much, Anna. That's really great. So I definitely advise um, for anyone who thinks they might be eligible for one of those funds, do check it out, have a look at the criteria. And actually, if you're not in one of those areas, there's lots of other funds that are available nationwide. And particularly if you head to that funds page, there's one that you'll see at the top, which is the Santander Changemaker Fund, which is a really great fund, which is pretty accessible. So do check that out if you are thinking about crowdfunding. Um, so as we continue and we go through um, the next few sessions where we're talking about crowdfunding for youth projects, we're going to be breaking it down into these um, three um, main stages, if you like. So today, we're going to be looking at planning your project. That's what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of the session. And here we're talking about building a team, finding your crowd, um, and figuring out um, what their motivation is going to be um, so for supporting your project, and basically getting everything together so that you've got a really strong foundation as you go forwards. Um, in the next session, we're going to be looking at creating the perfect project page. So how to, to tell your story, how to, to um, present your idea, what kind of rewards to offer, and all of the things that go into that your own unique um, page on Crowdfunder. In the final session um, of the three, we're going to be looking at running your project. And what we mean by that is how do you promote it? How do you get the word out? How do you talk about your project? How do you communicate and who with and at what time? So all of the um, really key strategic bits of advice there in terms of actually running the project, that's the one to, to make sure that you attend for that one. Um, so I will mention at this stage um, that we have um, a pack, a little downloadable guide, which goes along with each of these sessions. And they actually work really well on their own as well. If you want to just um, get started and, and start reading ahead, that's a really good idea. And in each of these, they're about 10 pages long. And they're a really um, usable um, workbook that you can go through. They have really useful things like templates for network mapping, checklists that you can use. You can actually download that PDF and edit right in the document. It's very high tech. Um, or you can download it and print it off and, and scribble all over it and use it as you want to. Um, but you'll find a link for that um, in this on YouTube, but also in the Eventbrite um, that you might have signed up with um, today. So to kick things off, we're going to start talking about your crowdfunding team. Now, crowdfunding can be a little bit lonely um, if you do it on your own. It's definitely worth having a few other people on board who can help you out with bits and bobs, even if that's just having a look at your page or um, providing uh, a listening ear for you as you're going through this process. Now, it doesn't have to be anything formal, a crowdfunding team. You don't need to issue uh, badges or T-shirts with names across the back. Um, if anything, it's just identifying people that you know that are going to be able to help you um, and that are willing to help you um, as you crowdfund. So we've identified here um, what we consider to be eight of the key skills um, that you need in a crowdfunding team. Um, as the person watching um, this workshop today, you are probably the project leader. So you're probably the person who's uh, making sure that everything is happening at the right time. Um, you may also be a great writer and you may also um, be a fantastic networker. So don't feel that you need to have a different person for each of these roles, particularly you know, if you feel that you can actually fill quite a few yourself. But it might be, for example, you could do with some help in terms of making something like a video or maybe in getting some nice images for your page, or maybe in um, using Facebook, for example, if you're not really familiar with that. So think about what skills you have um, and actually where those gaps might be and start to figure out um, who you can recruit um, to be on your crowdfunding team. So what we're gonna do now is look at the next step in putting your project together. And that's all about refining your idea. So you probably have a pretty good idea about what it is you're trying to do, what's the project. But what we want you to get into the habit of doing is really distilling that down and refining it so that you can get it across really quickly, really easily in any form of communication. So if someone comes up to you in the street, you can tell them in a couple of sentences what it is you're doing. You can do it in a tweet. You can do it on a Facebook post. You can do it in your project to aim really, really quickly. Um, so I've highlighted here um, four really awesome projects which have all run recently on Crowdfunder, who were all um, projects um, about youth. 
Um, the first one is a project in Aberdeen, which was all about um, taking food waste and turning it into healthy, nutritious meals, um, and also tackling food poverty. And essentially, um, really um, doing an education piece for young people in that area, and um, to make sure that they're making good choices um, about food. And um, the next one was about a, um, it was a tour uh, called Becoming um, for both disabled and non-disabled young performers and that was in Dorset. Uh, next we have a, a project where they were basically um, refurbing a long jump, um, I don't know what they call it, a long jump pit, sand pit, the correct uh, terminology. So it's an athletics club. Um, and it's about making it secure and also making it something that's very inclusive so other people can come along and try it out. And finally, this great example, it was all about science, coding, and making that accessible for kids in rural areas. Really simple, and I think that comes across very quickly. So I'd advise you to have a look at these four examples just to see how they told their story, just as a starting point. But we're gonna look at that last example in a little bit more detail. So this is the Atom Club. They raised seven and a half thousand pounds um, and they also did receive funding um, from Dorset County Council as part of their youth fund. And what they're actually doing is um, they have a, a club where kids can come along and they can learn about the STEM subjects. So that's science, technology, engineering and maths. And which have been identified as something that's going to be really key for the next generation going forwards. So they do everything from looking um, at space um, to dinosaurs, coding, they do science experiments. It's really cool, really fun. And we can see um, some of the young uh, Atom Club members down there in the picture as well. Now, when they will have started planning their project, one of the things that I've done really early on is start to think about Who's going to be my crowd? Who's going to back this project? So thinking about this project, about what they're all about, we can try and identify some of the things that people might have in common. What are those synergies um, that they're going to have with the project? Now, we've just picked out four here um, that might be four reasons why someone would be interested in this project. First up, they have kids. Um, they, they have kids themselves or they're very um, close to children maybe and um, they have nieces and nephews or, or grandchildren and they really love what this is doing in terms of um, helping kids to access um, these subjects and then to have fun while they're doing it. It might be that that person's really interested in one of those subjects, the science, um, technology, engineering and maths. It might be that they love space or they're really interested um, in dinosaurs or they're a scientist themselves so they really appreciate the value of teaching these things to kids at an early age. It might be that actually they're very local, they live in Dorset and they think this is something really worthwhile for people in Dorset. Or it might be that they are a web developer themselves or they are a software engineer and they can really see the value in teaching the next generation about coding. So once they've um, got this and they've really started to figure out who their crowd is going to be, then they can make a start on their network map. Um, before you panic and start thinking, I need to write this down really quickly, this template is available for you to download and use um, from the guides that I mentioned earlier. So you can just download that, print it out, and start working on your own network map. And this is absolutely one of the most useful things that you'll do as you go through your crowdfunding journey, because it's super useful for lots of things in the future. It not only tells you about who you're talking to when you're um, writing your story, but also what kind of rewards, and of course, how you're gonna um, promote your project to these people. So we've given you a few little groups to start you thinking, so local people, people on your Facebook, press perhaps, existing supporters, or even friends and family. And um, so start to work through these groups, adding on all the people that you know and all the people that you think might be interested in this project. And of course, it can go a layer out than just these initial people that you have a direct connection to. We can start to look at second level connections. So the people that you know, who do they know? And you can start to add them to the map too. It's a, it's a document that will never be finished. You can keep adding to it all the way through, right from, from today until the day that your project closes and maybe even so once you've got your network map together, it's really useful to start thinking about 
where those people fall on this diagram here. And this is breaking it down really simply into the main reasons why someone would pledge, why they would support a project. They generally fall into two camps. The first camp, they believe in your idea. So they think it's worthwhile. It's going to do some good in the world. It's something that is worth them putting their money into. On the other side, it's people who are, are set to benefit in some way from it. So they want the reward. There's something that you're offering and um, that they think is actually, I really want that. So you could see how particularly um, for business projects, um, for example, um, that that would be really key. They're not going to pledge on, on your idea just because they think it's great. Actually, they want something in return. Now, that sort of green bit in the middle is what we call the sweet spot. And that's really where crowdfunding works best. When you've got an idea that people can really get behind that has a really strong story, um, but also you're offering something which is really worthwhile in return. And by thinking about this and where your supporters, where those people in that network map might fall on that diagram, it starts to tell you about what's going to be really important and where you should put that emphasis. Is it going to be really important to have really strong, really exclusive, good value rewards? Or is it going to be more important to make sure that your story is really great and comes across really well? Of course, we want most projects to be doing both, but it's definitely something um, worthwhile considering. Now, once you've figured out who your crowd is going to be and you've started to work on that network map, we definitely recommend that you then start working on nurturing those people. And what we mean by that is getting them warmed up, telling them about your idea, telling them that you're going to be crowdfunding, letting them know what date it's going to be, perhaps using some teaser messages on things like social media, talking to local people about the fact that this is coming and making your existing supporters feel important and valued, like they're the first people to know about this. I think that's really, really key to make sure that you don't wait until you go live to start talking to people. And of course, um, your crowd isn't um, a set and, and stable thing. Your crowd is always growing and always expanding. And you can definitely work on growing your crowd before you go live. I'm just going to mention one tool, which I think is really great. And actually, there's lots of other advice on how you grow your crowd in the guide that I mentioned earlier. So if you're on Facebook, and you absolutely should be if you're crowdfunding, you can actually use that search bar in the top um, top of uh, the Facebook um, window to actually search for different groups or pages or even events um, that might be really um, worthwhile you knowing about and connecting with. So here I just put in for an example Dorset Youth just to see what kind of thing came up and straight away I start to see um, some um, different groups and different events and things that might be really worthwhile me knowing about and connecting with, particularly at this early stage, not only because they might be potential supporters, but also because they might be really great people to give feedback on my idea and on my page and on my rewards, which we always want to make sure we're doing before going live. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover today. So I hope that you found some of this useful and that you know where to look for lots more advice on planning your project. So before the next session, there's three things that are absolutely worth doing. First up, do download those guys. I know I've been harking on about them a fair bit, but that's because they're absolutely the best thing that you can do to get set up. Make sure that you have a go at getting your idea straight, refining it, and thinking about how you can get that across really quickly. And do make a start on your network map. As I said, it will be an ever-revolving document, but the sooner you make a start on it, the absolute better. So if you do have any questions at all, please do get in touch with us. You can reach us on email with support at crowdfunder.co.uk. And I'll see you next time. And it's going to be again at 12 o'clock on Friday. It's going to be in two weeks time on the 29th of September. Um, so hopefully you found this session useful. In that next session, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be looking really specifically at creating the perfect project page. And we're also going to be joined by someone who's already successfully crowdfunded, who's going to be telling us all about what they did and how they were successful. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.